Hi, this is Sherry from OurLifeHomeschooling.com, and I'm going to be sharing today how I teach our kids to read. In my last post, I talked about how there are two things that need to happen every day with your child for them to become a successful reader. The first is to read to them a lot. And that is one that takes a lot of time that you're going to be doing repetitively throughout the day in small chunks for them. Um, the second thing is reading practice, which should start at just about 15 minutes a day, 10 to 15 minutes a day. And of course, as a child becomes um, more proficient, that they're, that's going to increase that time of them practicing reading is going to increase until eventually at some point. Point, they're no longer learning to read, they are reading independently, they're reading to learn. Uh, when I talked about reading to them a lot, I gave a couple suggestions for the kinds of books that you can read to children. The first one I gave was uh, Nursery Rhymes. And I'm going to just share with you some of the Nursery Rhyme books that I've used with my kids. These are very simple books. These um, are actually hard to find anymore. I got these in an old bin and the years ago, probably more than 15 years ago. These are by Paragon Publishing. Um, the reason I picked them was bec because they came with little musical tapes. Uh, so that tells you how old they are. And the reason I liked that was because kids love music. So I played these. Um, even then, I had a hard time finding a tape player because... <laughs> It was old then, but I played these until I learned the songs and was able to sing them to my kids. Um, and kids just love songs. If you can make motions with the songs, that makes it even better. So that's why I picked these. It was kind of, I stumbled on them by accident and just stuck with them because I had learned little motions and songs for each of the kids and little children, especially um, toddlers and preschoolers, they, uh, they feed on that and they will repeat them on their own. When they find time by themselves, you'll see them repeating them. Another one that's great is We Sing Nursery Rhymes and Lullabies. There's also a We Sing Bible Story, or I'm sorry, Bible Songs. Um, the thing I love about these is that it has music written in there if you don't know um, any music for some of the nursery rhymes. It also, at some of the bottom of the pages, has um, some motions that you can try. So those are what I use for nursery rhymes. I also suggested for reading to them that you read chapter books. And for this, you don't need... Um, a huge collection that you know they're always seeing something new you can if you if that's your thing but I like just a small collection of 30 or 40 picture books that we read over and over again and they become our friends of course if over time if they kind of get tired of those then maybe you want to switch them out for another 30 or 40 but I just liked having a small collection that they almost seem like uh, close companions, experiences that we've had together. Another one I mentioned as far as reading aloud to them is chapter books. And kids of all ages love chapter books. Um, ever since I can remember, I've been reading a chapter book every day, one or two chapters every day to our kids after lunch. And um, when you do something regularly over a long period of time, it's amazing the progress that you can make. The last thing that I mentioned as far as reading to them a lot is memory work. When kids memorize short poems, uh, short passages of scripture, this is a way to get words into their bank to solidify them and something for them to pull from. It's something that you'll hear them, just like nursery rhymes, you'll hear them start saying lines and phrases of these in random spots in your day. So memorizing can be a great way to feed into them, to feed more words into them. But I wanted to elaborate just a little bit more in this video about how I teach our kids to read specifically regarding reading practice. 
I think uh, you might be surprised at how simple it is and how inexpensive it is. I have not spent a lot of money on my reading curriculum and it's um, it's almost, I was intimidated to share it a little bit because there's not much to it. Um, we just do the same thing uh, every day consistently. We make progress. And if you have found a great reading curriculum that you love, a great phonics program, by all means, stick with it. Don't try to do something that, um, you know, that someone else is doing. If you found something you like, don't, don't change. But I just want to share with you what I have used and what has been very successful with our kids. Our kids are all proficient readers. They love reading. And um, so I thought I would share what we do. The first thing, of course, is teaching them their letters and their letter sounds. And this you can do in lots of different ways. Um, I wait with our kids until they are asking and um, mommy, can I read? I want to know. Or you start seeing things like um, they start pointing out letters and they want to know what the letters are. And um, I feel like if you push it too early, it's going to be a lot of work if your child isn't ready and if they're not interested. But when they're ready, when they're the ones that want to learn, when they realize that you have a tool that they want for themselves and that they think they can get, that's when you want to start teaching them to read. So the first place I start is with letter sounds. I have some simple uh, leapfrog flashcards. Um, there's lots of other great resources that you could find any type of simple flashcards. You could use um, a book. You can use, uh, Dr. Seuss has a book that goes through all the alphabet. Um, anything that you um, find that has simple alphabet letters for them to learn and to teach them their sounds. Another program we like to use is starfall.com. I'll put that in the link below. Um, so just something simple to teach them their letters. After they learn their letters, to prepare them for the curriculum that I do use to teach them to read, I have them start putting together simple words. So I will start, for example, with at. And I'll put a line before it, and I'll just slowly show them how to, you know, at, and then put it together. And then I'll say, well, what if we put a letter here? You know, and then they learn to read that. So I'll erase it. And we'll try, well, what if we change it to this? Then what would that say? And you go through each letter, b, a, t, bat. And I often, when I'm doing individual sounds, will do dots. And then when we're slurring it together, do a line. And that just helps them to visualize it a little bit. Um, I'll work on this. We'll do this maybe once a day. And this is part of our 10 to 15 minutes. We'll do this for a couple days until they start getting um, pretty good at it. I might change it up and do something like this. We'll go through the sounds, uh, g, and then we will put this at the beginning. And, whoops, is that, there you go. And, you know, have them go through those sounds, changing it up a little bit, having them try different beginning letters. This is helping them to recognize beginning letters. Once they have gotten to that, um, I might take those words that we learned and just write them all out. Bat, cat, rat, sat, and so on. I may might make about 10 of them and make, put them in a list. And instead of slowly doing it, just have them go through and see if they can read a list of words. When they get to this point, uh, and you might want to change it also, you know, sometimes I've done other vowels like et, I mentioned ug, um, you know, ot, you can try with other vowels. But once they're just starting to put simple words together, that's when I start our reading curriculum. For our reading curriculum, <clears throat> I use Bob books. 
These, oh, that's not the first one. Here's the first one. Bob books. Here is the first set. Beginning readers. The Bob books set is a set of usually about 10 books, 8 to 10 books in each set. These are simple, simple beginning readers. So the first box and the first book in the first box is called Matt, which you can see this is where I was starting with them putting letters together. Um, and it's very simple. It starts with some beginning letter sounds, all the letters that are going to be in this book. And so I always review this with them, go through it and go through the picture and talk about beginning sounds. But then you can see it's very simple. Matt. Matt sat. Sam. Sam sat. Uh, the next book after that is uh, introduces the next vowel E. So it's simple short E sounds. And oh, I'm sorry, that's wrong. That is not wrong. It's not till the third book that it introduces a different vowel. But I just wanted to show that to show that um, they introduce usually a new sound or a new concept each book, or it's a review of what they've been doing, and it slowly builds. So we will work on the first Bob box. All the books in there, we go sequentially from the first to the last. Uh, we do maybe one or two books a week, and then the next week we'll start with another one. I don't start with a new book until they are... Um, reading successfully and you can tell it's with confidence and we'll work through um, the first box until they finish. We take it at their pace. I don't push. Um, we keep it slow because I want this to be a pleasurable experience for them. Now sometimes you'll have kids that complain and oh this is so hard because it is hard for them when they're first learning and my feeling is anything that you work at for 10 or 15 minutes a day is not going to hurt you in the long run. And so, you know, there have been times where I've said to the kids, I know this is tough, but you can do this for 10 minutes and then you'll get a break. And as they move along, they're going to feel more confidence when they can read more things. So this is the first box in the Bob book set. The second box is... Advancing Beginning Readers. This also has eight or ten um, books in it. The next one is Word Families. So um, you'll have a few consonant blends, endings, a few sight words. The next box is Compound Words, so putting two words together to make more complex words. And the last box is Long Vowels. So there is something that I do in addition to the books, to just reading the books. I do about, I want to say maybe five minutes of phonics practice um, before we actually read the books. So five minutes of phonics practice and then maybe ten minutes of reading through our Bob books. <clears throat> and for our, I know there are some fantastic phonics programs out there. Uh, Explode the Code is one that comes to mind right away. I know there's lots of great ones. Um, I started with this and I kept it really simple. And I say that, I hope that's encouraging to some people that it doesn't have to be something complex or you don't have to feel like you've got to get the perfect curriculum for your child to read. I made up our own phonics, phonics curriculum, I guess you could say. As we came to a new Bob book, I would look at, through the book before we started it, and I would write down the new beginning sounds. Uh, maybe those were just a new vowel. Maybe it was putting two letters together, like PH to make the sound F, or TH to make the sound F. I would write that down in here, and then I would write one or two words below it. So in the beginning of this book, I started with about two pages of sight words. And uh, every time you come to a sight word, for example, a sight word is a word that you can't spell or you can't sound out very easily. So the letter uh, you know, when a kid comes to it, they're going to immediately say a or a. 
but they need to understand this is a sight word. It does not follow the rules. And when you see that word, you say, uh. Another word would be the. That doesn't follow the rules. When you see that word, you are, you know, you go through that this word says the. And I make a list of all the sight words that don't follow the rule. They are on the first page of this book. And they're what we look at first. After that, we will look, for example, at a page like this. I made, let's see if I can, yep, there we go. I made this page, I made all the R blend sounds. This is just as we came to them. So I didn't create this beforehand. I just looked in the book, the next book we were reading, and if we came to a sound, um, once we started the AR sounds, I would write AR. I wrote three AR words under it. And so before reading, that day, our book, we would look at the sight words, we would go over the sounds in that book and just read those three words. And just remember, when you come to a word that has A-R in it, it makes the sound R, like car, bar, far. Um, here's another example of a page that we made with O-W and O-U sounds. Um, so this is very simple, again, when we sat down for our 15 minutes, we did about five minutes of reviewing the sight words and reviewing the new sounds that were in our book. And then we would get out the book. We would read one book, maybe two books, if uh, they were up for that and if they were ready for that kind of progress. Uh, one rule that I did work on with them when we came to long vowels, because long vowels is a um, kind of a big jump for kids. They're going from saying the sounds of vowels, a, e, i, a, and a, to saying their names, a, e, i, o, u. So uh, for this, I taught them a game. I taught them the five vowels, a, e, i, o, u, and sometimes y. And I reminded them of their sounds. And we would play a consonant game. And I told them every other letter other than these letters is a consonant so they would try to think of one for example t and then it would be my turn and i would try to think of one c and then it would be their turn s and so on so this is uh just a simple game that i taught them to learn the difference between a vowel and a consonant and to teach them that vowels have sounds and they have names Two other rules that I taught them with learning their long vowel words was whenever you see two vowels together, um, the first vowel says its name and the second vowel is quiet. So for example, if you see O and A in a word together, the first vowel says its name, I show that sign for name, I show this sign for sound. O and A, the first vowel says its name, the second one is silent, so this would say O, and then I always give them an example, like boat. The second um, rule that I taught them was the pattern V, C, E, which is vowel, consonant, silent E. So an example of this might be eight, vowel, consonant, silent E. This is not necessarily a rule, but a pattern that they're going to see in a lot of words. Um, aim, for example, as in came. Vowel, consonant, silent E. And they begin to recognize this pattern and it can help them to identify when they would say the long sound of the vowel or the short sound. So when my kids get to the end of the last Bob box, the fifth box, usually if they have not already, they are starting to read picture books on their own. So that's where the Bob books take you. They take you to when you are about ready to read picture books. And even some books that maybe have less pictures, for example, um, Little Bear is often a book that I will give them after they finish their Bob box. I'll give them stories like Little Bear, Another great one is Frog and Toad. Um, I don't seem to have a copy of that here. Any of the Francis books, 
When they finish, they're ready to read Francis books. You can see these books have a lot more words and fewer pictures. Uh, another great one is Nate the Great, Amelia Bedelia. These are just some of the ones that I will give my kids to work on after they finish. This is where they will be after they finish the last Bob box. And after that, they pretty much start slowly progressing to reading books, more picture books, and eventually they're ready for simple chapter books. So those are just a few things that I taught my kids along with the Bob books. Sometimes if they got frustrated and I could tell that it was really taking them a while to get through a book, I would help them out and we would do every other page. So they would read a page and I would read a page and that seemed to be enough of a crutch for them to um, give them the motivation to finish that book. So that's uh, my simple way of how I teach our kids to read. Like I told you, it's not impressive. It was inexpensive and it was very simple. So if you found something great, by all means stick with that and go through what is working for you. Uh, but if you're looking for something simple and easy and um, just using some of the things you have, this is a great way to start. I hope that's helpful for the people who need it. <music>